This video will show you how to test for equal slopes for the analysis of covariance. Remember, we've got our test statistic here. So we're going to calculate a value of t. We need to know the slope for the bream species, and we need to know the slope for the pike species. Now, to do this, we actually need to run the regressions first. And so I urge you to look, take a look at the R code to see the regression output for the separate simple linear regressions for the bream species and for the pike species. And so in the numerator of the test statistic, we need to know the slope for the bream and we need to know the slope for the pike. And then in the denominator, we just take the square root of the squared values for the standard errors. And so by doing that, uh, we can think of this as pooling the different standard errors in both of the data sets. And so we're going to use that uh, test statistic. We're going to plug in our numbers for our simple linear regressions. And remember, the, the objective here is to look at this hypothesis. That is, the beta 1 value represents the slope for both of these simple linear regressions. We want to calculate a null hypothesis stating that the slope for the Breen species is equal to the slope for the Pike species with the alternative hypothesis that they're not equal. And so uh, we can use the test statistic above to find out what this value of t might be. And so we can look at the R output and we can find a value of t for the bream was estimated to be 54.108. For the pike, it was 53.195. So that's our numerator. And then remember we take the standard errors in the square root of those in the denominator. So if you look at the R output, you should see 2.986 was the standard error for the slope estimate for beta 1 for bream. So we'll square that. And we will add 3.321. That, remember, is the slope estimate from the Pike data set. And then we'll square that. And so that's our value of t. And so once we do that, we'll get 0 0.913 divided by 4.466. And when you divide that, those two values, you'll get 0 0.204. So that's our value of t or our test statistic that we might compare to some critical value of t on the t table. Now, I don't think I actually said what level of significance I want to run this hypothesis test at. But if you assume it's something like the 0.05 level, if we set our level of significance or our alpha level to 0 0.05, it's going to be really difficult to reject this null hypothesis because this value of t is so small. Now, you can go ahead and look up what the critical value might be and look that up on the t table. But by now in class, you should recognize that small values of t like this, we're going to end up accepting the null hypothesis. So why is that? Uh, well, you might remember the t distribution. It's got a mean of 0. Our value is quite close to 0 of 0 0.204. You should be curious when values of t are above 2 or less than negative 2. These tend to be rejection regions in data sets when we're looking at the t distribution. And so with a value of 0 0.204, I know at this stage, I'm not even going to bother looking this up on the critical table for t, because I know I'm going to end up accepting the null hypothesis, because this is such a small value of t. And so then we can say our outcome is that um, we will need to accept the null hypothesis. So we can say that the slopes are equal. And so this is good for the, for the approaches of the analysis of covariance. Remember, again, that analysis of covariance assumes that the slopes are equal so that you can add uh, that covariate in your analysis of covariance.